Take a double. This is a very good way to start them out. Uh, it's easy to be tense, but it's, it's hard for some people <clears throat> just to be nice and relaxed and just be able to go through the movements without trying to tense up. And tensing up is something that uh, you know, an unnaturally tense kind of a cop that is very hard to uh, change as you get more advanced. Uh, breathing. You know, we have, we have drills for doing the circle block, we have drills for punching, we have drills for kicking, but you know, we don't have a drill for breathing. And that was something that I felt was very important for our style, because I saw, you know, as I visit hundreds of dojos, that this is the one area where people perform kata, and there is no knowledge whatsoever of breathing. Some people will be able to hold their breath throughout the whole kata, <laughs> and at one of the Don tests, one of my students went up and there, we had about, that's back when we had the big boards, test boards, and we had like 20 people on the board, and this guy got up there and he was so scared, nervous, I mean, you could tell, he was just shaking like a leaf. And he went through his kata and without breathing at all, like that, and he made a turn and just dropped. <laughs> and afterwards, and I kid him to this day, he's still very active. And he swore he was breathing. He says, I don't know what happened. <laughs> but the thing is, after a while, you, you don't realize that you're not breathing. So if, if we spend so much time working on things like punches and kicks, why don't we spend a little time on trying to understand how to breathe as you're going through your kata? And I came up with a, a, a way that I've been doing for many, many years. And it, it works for my students. And it's something, again, not something that I'm saying you have to do with. You know, but you've got to have some, some way of addressing that. When you become tense, and students will do that, normally they, they don't have a method of breathing. They just hold their breath, and then every once in a while will gasp for air. Obviously, there's something wrong with that, that scenario. Break it down well, into three parts. So <clears throat> from here, I bring my arm back and just. See, and this was Weiji's attempt. He, he made a noise, but. His breathing was so soft, we, we, we didn't understand it. So we just thought they were making a noise. But in fact, that there was an exhalation of sorts. All right? But we don't link it to the movement. So if you do this, like that, then you're linking it to that movement. And you know, that, I'm exaggerating there. But if, if, if you hear people breathe that way, yeah, there is a, a, uh, a connection. But it's not a good one. It's not one that Weiji ever had. He wanted to separate the breathing from the actual movement. So what I did is I bring the arm back, and you hesitate a second, then you breathe. Out and back. That's one count. And then step, and that's one count. And at each count, you take that breath. So it looks like this. follows the movement. Now, why do you do that? Well, if you're in a fight, how, how many fights are consist of all punches and kicks so that you can breathe following or while you're, you're punching? A lot of fights, you're standing there talking or yelling at one another or just waiting for something to happen. And that's where the problem comes in. People associate the breathing with the movement, and then the only time they're going to breathe is if there is an opportunity to do that movement. And it's easy to key eye when you're punching, so you're, that's a way of breathing. But it's not what Weiji had in mind. The breathing is separate. So if you're standing there, you're still breathing. And it's like you set up a tempo. And you can breathe through your nose or mouth breathe. So now if you're, if, if you're just standing there and you're arguing or whatever, you're still breathing. When you get under stress, all of a sudden that breathing kicks in. 
First thing that happens when you're under stress should be shoulders down and then start that breathing. Instead of just standing there being tense. Does that make any sense? All right. So just standing there, make the sound. Put your hand below the navel and either through your nose or through your mouth. You notice as I'm exhaling, the stomach goes up. That's what, why they call it kind of a reverse breathing, because you're pushing down. And when you exhale, inhale takes place naturally. A boxer friend of mine, we were talking about it, and he said, well, you know, my feeling is all you have to concentrate on is exhaling, because the inhaling will take place naturally. And, and that's really what weighty breathing is all about. You exhale and you, you create kind of a void here, and then the inhale comes naturally. So you focus on exhale, and the inhale follows naturally. I'll try a few more. Okay, now let's try it with Let's just call it soft sanchen. Where you're, you're, you're just working on your breathing, and this, and think of it just as a drill, like you're doing punches or kicks or blocks or whatever. Okay, with me, right, sanchen, mission, and uh, start breathing now. Okay, relax. Again, we're not doing copy, we're doing exercise. The drills. This is a drill. And again, a lot of people think that when I, when I run a seminar or something, and I'm telling you how you have to do it. And that's not the case at all. I'm still a student, and I'm still learning. And that's why I love the art so much, because over the last, God, years has it been? But I've changed a lot of times. But you notice the, the wage is still the same. The core principles of the style remains the same, but the way I do it, the way I understand it, has changed a great deal. And just to get a little bit off track, a lot of people, when they discover something, they'll make the change in the coffin. And over a period of time, the coffin changes a great deal. And that's a little bit of a danger, where the coffin style loses resemblance to uh, the wage system. And there are people... You know, good friends of mine who, uh, you know, oh, wow, you know, I'm doing this and that. I, you know, all this things here, uh, you know, now, now my kata is really practical for me. And, of course, when you're a fifth, sixth, seventh don, that's true. I mean, you, you sort of personalize the kata for you. But if you're a teacher, you have to be careful that you don't, you know, every time you discover something, that you introduce it in your class. Uh, one of my... Uh, Early, early students, a fellow by the name of John Patelli. He was an MIT professor at like 16, and he was a re real genius kind of guy. And he loved <coughs> the art. He, you know, he listened to me talk about how everything comes from Song Shen. So his goal in life was to change movements in Song Shen as he discovered them. Pretty soon, Song Shen looked like Say San. Right? So the point being that you always want to keep your Song Shen looking like Song Shen. And you say san, always like say san. It doesn't mean that you can't have a little different understanding of it. But try not to change the system. Give your students the same opportunity you have. And the reason you're here is perhaps just to learn a few more things and reasons why you should keep the content the same. And 
some of the things that maybe you should focus on so that when they get to brown belt level and they start to spar, that the sparring will have some resemblance to Weiji other than Taekwondo or rather than Taekwondo or techniques that are flashy but have no, you know, no meaning to our style. All right, now we're going to do a second level Sanchen. And all that is, now you're not going to be able to see much difference, but here you're going to feel, again, tuck cheeks in, shoulders down, not forward, and beginning the kata, about the speed here. Okay? And Hold down. Right here, as soon as your shoulders go down, you start the breathing, the temples. Ajime, right foot. Okay, now continue to breathe while I check. You don't have to make any noise, but that the breathing should follow that temple. So that when you pick up, you move around the breathing. Good. Ready? Hey. There you go. Hey. Second one, same way. Now, a couple of points. When you do your double thrusts, now I'll cover this quickly because I've talked about it a lot. It's not just squeezing your hands, opening and back. That is not a karate movement at all. You're penetrating someone. You're grabbing, ripping, pulling in. Even though you're not tense, you're still doing it that way. Your hands open here. Out, rip, open. And you have that mentality. So this is a fighting system, okay? Out, in. And your third one, you're in that fighting pose. And then instead of a nice lazy kind of a move here, you lift this leg and fall into that position. You attack this position. Right. Keep that block out. Don't let it come in. Out, hit. Here, don't go backwards. You've got to lift this leg, attack. Tap position. All right. And it goes good. Now you can do blocks one of three ways. You can attack, you pick your tools up like that. You can attack doing the block here. And you can attack with the thrust, depending on the speed. And that's what you can play with. That's what makes it interesting. All right, let's do it again. Second speed. Great. All right, now. Shoulders down. All right. You should feel strength all throughout your body. You do not develop belly power by having someone pound on you. You develop that over time. All right. So there's, it's not something that happens overnight. Right foot, ajime. Keep 
keep that breathing going. Go at your own speed now. Work it around your breathing. is all about now when, you, when you're doing it with purpose it's not just seeing how fast how hard you can be it, 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 every movement has meaning and when you start to breathe how many of you have ever been in a real fight I mean, where you were really scared I'm sure there's a couple of you unless you've had that experience you will not know the value of learning how to breathe all right where the breathing kicks in I uh, owned a nightclub restaurant bar in Brockton, Massachusetts for four years. And I, my brother and I would take turns on the door. And there were a lot of times that my, my heart was up here and you know, dangerous times. The thing that I always remember though is that my, as soon as that happens, you know, I'd get in that position and all of a sudden my breathing would start. And I wasn't even thinking about it. And I noticed other people, even just under a test situation, how they stopped breathing. So it's a very important. Now you may not like the way I, you know, the, my breathing uh, method, but come up with something that kicks in when you're under stress. Shoulders down, which immediately sets off the breathing, starts the breathing. And that should be in a rhythmic tempo, so that you can just move around the breathing if you have to. At that point, when you're moving full speed, you know, there is no, there, there is no nice timing like you have in the second speed. That's why each of these levels you're working on and concentrating on a couple of very important elements that you can't find when you're doing it full speed only. All right? So think about it. A couple of other minor things. Uh, when you turn, you have to, you're turning to clear this area here. Something's happening behind you. And make sure that when you start that turn, your body is moving. When your foot lands, you're in position. All right? And be careful of training tools like this. That's a very bad habit to get into. You know, if you if you have to block, think about it for a second. Someone throws a punch at you, and the first thing you do is this. All right, and the punch is up here. Uh, it, it won't work. It's a training tool. It's something you work with on uh, maybe up to green belt or whatever. And at some point, you should keep that uh, check block arm up there and you know, simplify that block. And later on, we're going to talk about uh, how your blocks relate to your San Chen. But nothing relates to this. This was something Kane Weiji developed. I don't know, I've told the story a million times, but uh, Tamiyosi and some of these senior people, when they block, they draw their hands into their body. And of course, if uh, you're standing still, you have a circle. When you move, it should be a spiral. The arm never comes closer to you. It always remains out in that strong sanction arm position. Okay, but a lot of the senior people would block. Like, yeah, Tom Yossi still does it that way. But he tells me don't do it that way. <laughs> he likes it. So what Tom or Weiji did, he drew a circle on the wall and he says, here, put your hand here. Now when you block, you've got to keep your block out. That means your shoulder moves. If you try to keep your shoulder stiff, the arm is naturally going to come inward. And that's what you don't want. 
and I, I see a lot of students. Last night I saw a few. And they have a problem because when they move fast, their arm is going to come like that. And that's not contributing to defending yourself. So Weiji had them do this. And, and someone said, well, what do we do with the other arm? Uh, uh, put it over here. <laughs> so it was just, you know, that was just to sort of control where the elbow was. And you get that nice feeling of moving your shoulder. It's a nice drill. And then it slowly crept in to become part of the kata. And they still do it that way in Okinawa. And, of course, now it, 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 it's rampant. Although, you know, since... Uh, I think maybe five, six years ago, Kiyohite now is starting to do it the way I recommend it. You saw it on YouTube, I think. <laughs> yeah. right. Anyway, that's something sacred to a lot of dojos because they don't know why they do it, but that hand has to go here. Uh, if you remember when you're under stress, you're going to do what you practice, think about everything that you're doing, what you're teaching. Again, as a drill for white belts, green belts, it's no problem, but we start to be showdown. And the first thing you do when you block is this. Uh, and you might have a bunkai for it, but it's not a neutral kind of a movement that the Weiji block was designed for, in my estimation.